Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another video about the Ortec ProMig 250 Inverter Welder. I've had the welder for five or six weeks now. It's done everything I've asked it to do in the shop. Thin stuff, rusty stuff. Done some LME welding with it. It's recently been away to a friend of mine's. Uh, he makes exhausts for racing cars, stainless steel stuff, roll cages, a lot of fabrication. It's been sat on a bench for a week, running pointy at wire, welding stainless exhausts. The welder, the lad that used it, uh, said it was okay, no problems at all with it, like using it. Uh, one thing I have done, I've changed the torch from a 25 to a 15. It's a lighter, lighter more flexible torch. It just suits the sort of, the sort of welding I do. Um, now I've got it back, Artec have sent us some bits and pieces up so I can try aluminium welding. I have welded aluminium before with a MIG uh, using a spool gun. That's where you've got a, your cable comes up and your torch has got a spool on top of it. And it's a very short push for the, for the wire. It was a big transformer unit quite a few years ago. Uh, your, your main problem with welding aluminium with a MIG is wire feed. On a big industrial unit that's designed to weld aluminium all the time, you've got your normal roller inside your machine and you also have a pull roller inside the torch so it's pushing in the machine pulling in the torch that's how you get good wire feed so what you've got to do you've got to optimize what you've got what I'm going to do I'm going to use a 25 torch that came with the welder I'm going to take out the steel liner and put in a Teflon liner which is much less friction for the aluminium There's also a different roller, it's a U-shaped roller, U-shaped groove as opposed to a V-shaped groove. This one's for one in 1.2mm aluminium wire. There's different tips, obviously one in 1.2mm tips, but the holes are slightly larger to allow for the greater rate of expansion of the aluminium wire. And there's also the rules of aluminium wire. What I'll do, I'll get some close-up shots of the various bits and pieces. I'll show you how to install the new liner into the torch, how to set the wire up in the machine because you use a lighter, a lighter feed. The idea is if the wire, what happens is the wire melts to the tip if you're not careful and then the rollers keep on driving, you keep push, pulling the trigger and you get what they call a bird's nest. I'm sure I'll be able to do one to show you. So what you try and do is have the rollers with just enough grip to push the wire through. And if it does stick, the idea is the rollers should slip. This is the torch that came with the welder. It's a 25 torch. 250 amp torch. This is the torch I'm going to use for the aluminium welding. The first thing we have to do, we take the liner out. If you look at the end of the torch, it's what they call a Euro connector. You've got two contacts, that's for your switch, for your on off, for your welding. There's a connector there with a little luring on, that's your gas connector. And there's a connector here, that's what your wire, that's where your wire feeds up. We take the end off there, and that is your your liner, the liner for steel welding, MIG welding, is wire, twisted wire liner, like the outer of a wooden cable. You appreciate the inside, that's quite rough, and the aluminium wire doesn't like feeding through it because the aluminium is very soft. Put that away and keep it safe.
This is a liner I'll take of suppliers. It's a Teflon liner, plastic liner. That pushes, pushes in there. Too long, which is how you because you've got to cut them. We'll take the other end of the torch off and take the shroud off, unscrew the tip, and there's the liner coming out. End of the liner feeds into the into the little tip, make sure the end of the leg has been cut nice and clean and square. That screws into there. And your tip and your shoulder would go onto that. Right, the other end. A little ferrule on there which grips the leg up, holds it into place, and there's a little o-ring comes down. And the nut goes back on top. Okay, so we're making sure that we're, we're laying us right down to the end. We'll nip that up. It's a handy little spar comes with a actually comes with a welder. Just a little nip on there, and that locks the liner in place. Don't cut the layer off yet, we'll wait until we install the torch onto the machine and we'll leave as long as we possibly can right up into the feed rollers to give the wire as much chance as possible to feed correctly. This is the roller point 8 wire. I'm going to take this out and fit all the bits for the aluminium. Uh, you've got to be careful when you take the wire out. Easiest way to do it, just simply Cut the wire. Make sure you cut the hole out there. You don't want to lose the end of the wire. That locks it off. It stops it unwinding. You see, there's a lot of wire on those drums. Um, if you lost the end of it, it, it all spins round and gets snarled up. I dropped one of them once. What a mess! Take the spool of wire off. Let me see my feed roller off. Cut the end nice and clean. When it comes out the torch, just pull it out and just scrap that bit of wire. I'll keep it for as fill wire for TIG welding. There's a lock running on the torch which unscrews and the torch simply screws out. What they call a Euro type fit, it's a standard fitting on most big welders. That's a torch out. This is the, the feed mechanism inside the welder. That's the roller that drives the wire, the driven roller. That roller there is an idler roller. That's held down there under spring tension, and your wire is driven between those two rollers. Right, we'll take the roller off. It's on the key wheel and adapt that simply comes off like that. Steel wire being a, a lot stiffer than aluminium rig wire, there's a steel sleeve in there that the wire runs through. We need to remove that. There's a little circlip on the end. It's hard trying to work it on the camera. Just flick the little circlip off like that. That comes out like that. Now the metal sleeves out. A plastic liner replaces that and that goes right up to be as close as possible to the feed rollers. So you've got as short a distance possible to push the aluminium without it being supported. Put my feed roller back on. We'll put the 
one mil one on first use a one mil wire first the rule has exactly the same as the one for welding steel except this has got a u-shaped groove and the steel one has a v-shaped groove the line has fed through into there torch locates and that snugs it up into place and I've got the torch in place so what I'll do I'll mark mark this where it needs cutting which is there Nice, nice clean cut. Nice clean square end. Here's a liner coming through right in close to the rollers. So we've only got a quarter inch of wire unsupported. Right, that's the end of our wire. Pull it through. And that feeds through the, through the guide over the top of the roller into the Teflon liner. Top roller on, down. And that's actually adjustable. We've got to power it up. Our drag rollers are working fine there. There it is on the end. Right. The one mil contact tip, which again are different to steel contact tips. That stays over the wire. Noticeably slacker than a, than a, than a steel wire one. Size of the all has got one and then an ear ear for aluminium. So what I want to, I hear is to happen is if that sticks, I want the rollers to slip, which they are. The rollers slip in there. The wire's jammed there, and the rollers are slipping. We'll try it at that. Uh, the idea is if the wire sticks to the end of the tip, the rollers will just slip, which they are there. Put a shot on a torch. I've got a new one, so I'm going to put a new one on. Nobody knows a bottle of organ, which I've got some high purity organ. Uh, we'll put some gas on it. We'll give it a try. Just flick the sewer clip off like that. Where the little bastard go? There's a little hole on the side of the side of the drum. Come on, you bastard. 